All right, hello. Um, so, quick video about uh, baking, and particularly about baking uh, compound objects. So, objects that are made up of multiple smaller objects, right? Um, so, if you, I have, uh, so I have a high poly here and a low poly. Uh, they are built in the same. Uh, physical space, the same 3D space. So they're ov overlapping in every way. They're ready, pretty much ready to uh, ready to bake here. Um, although I don't think this has UVs yet. No, so I'm just going to do a quick automatic UV here uh, on the low poly, just the low poly, and let's call that good for now. Um, so high poly and a low poly, but they're each made up of um, separate objects. So there's this, uh, the top part, the slide, um, there's the body down here, there's whatever the heck this uh, add-on thing is, the trigger guard, uh, the triggers, and the barrel. Um, multiple objects, and they're all kind of intersecting. Um, they're not perfectly stitched in. It's not a contig continuous contiguous <laughs> one of those uh, uh, it's not a fully stitched in mesh right so if we bake the the high poly onto the low poly as they are then those overlapping meshes are going to spill over onto each other's normal maps um, and other maps uh, creating kind of some messy artifacts and some weird uh, overlap stuff so the easiest way to solve this problem well easiest uh, the most straightforward way, the most, um, the way to do this that doesn't require uh, some special software. So like Marmoset has some settings in its baker that can, uh, if you set it up right, it'll sep it'll bake these objects separately or whatever. Uh, I'm sure other apps have them too, but what I usually do um, is, is, is this. So I have the high poly in a, in a group uh, labeled gun high poly. I have a low poly inner group labeled gun low poly, and these are the assembled versions. And you want to maintain those. You want to uh, retain those, rather. So I'm going to duplicate both of those, control D, and I'm going to rename this one gun low poly underscore exploded. And I'm going to rename this one gun high poly underscore exploded. Okay, and then just temporarily, temporarily, I'm going to hide the assembled ones and then we're going to explode these versions and the way you do that uh, you make sure they're both visible so you can select both of them and you're gonna turn on this x-ray mode uh, which is up here so you can kind of see a ghost uh, kind of opacity on on the mesh so you can see exactly what you're selecting uh, you're gonna click and drag over uh, the pairs, so the high and low poly pairs of just uh, the separate objects, right? Um, if the if these are all combined, if you've combined them, you can uh, you can select both uh, and switch to face mode on each one. So again. Um, I'm, I'm selecting both of those and you have to hold right click switch to face for the one and then um, and then hold right click and switch to face for the other you have to do it twice for each separate object easiest way though is to separate them beforehand um, just so that all the pieces that you're gonna be exploding are their own kind of separate meshes hence the groups right so they're all in here in a group. So I'm going to click and drag these, and I'm going to move the high and low poly pair together. Because um, again, they need to exist in the same 3D space in order for the bake to work, right? Uh, and then you just move them away from each other. It doesn't matter how or, or in what way. They just need to have a decent distance away from each other so that when they do bake, they're not still uh, cross talking, right? Um, there's actually two triggers there. I just don't have a high poly for the triggers, so I'm going to move those away. And that's it. That's the whole process. 
So now, the, how do you bake it, right? So I'm going to go ahead and export. I'm going to re-enable the assembled versions, and I'm going to export all four of these versions: the high, the low, and the high assembled, and the low and the high exploded. Uh, okay. And notice I did the UVs on the low poly before I made the exploded versions. So this process comes when you're just at the very end, when you're ready to bake and move on to texturing. Everything is done. Modeling's done. UVs are done. Um, everything's already done. So the easiest way is to just go down this list if you have them grouped like this. Uh, select that group. Uh, I'm going to center everything and freeze the transforms. Uh, and then we'll export selection. Uh, and this is in, in the right folder. I'm going to do gun underscore low poly. Just name them the same things. Select that. Center. Uh, delete history. Freeze transforms. Export selection. This is going to be gun high poly. Um, next low. Center pivot. Delete history, freeze transforms, export selection, gun, low poly, exploded. And then same for the last one. Export selection, gun, high poly, exploded. Now, OK, so you've, you've exported all those. And you can come in to Substance Painter and, and start a new project. So you're, you're now beginning the texturing process, right? And the first stage of texturing is to bake your maps. So we're going to start a new project here, uh, set up the right, uh, whatever the right template is. So Metal Rough, probably, 2K, or whatever. And you're going to select your low poly. Um, I'm going to find it here. Do, 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 do. Okay, so, and I'm you're gonna start by baking the exploded stuff first, and then once those maps are baked, you're gonna replace the exploded low poly with the assembled low poly, and then we're gonna bake another um, another couple maps on the assembled one. Um, so that'll make sense in a sec. So. Low poly exploded. You start with the exploded first. So I'm going to start the project with the exploded version, which looks like this, right? And we had our nice dirty automatic UVs, which is fine. Uh, okay, so now you go down here into texture settings. You can see my camera's in the way. That's not what I wanted to grab. <laughs> okay. Um, come down here to texture settings and then this bake mesh maps button. Right? We're going to change the output to our project resolution. Most of the time that's going to be the case. Uh, so 2K. Then in high definition meshes is where we're going to add our high poly exploded, right? So if you choose the high poly and bake onto the exploded, it's it's not going to look right because they're not they don't exist in the same physical space, um, the, the same three D space. So it's it's not going to it's going to be a mess. Um, so we're going to pick the high poly exploded, uh, and I just leave all these checked for now. We're we will probably rebake a couple of these in a second, um, and just try it with regular standard. Uh, standard settings and see what happens. Which is pretty much not much, right? So if you want to check your uh, actual maps, you come down here. This changes the view of what, what, you're, what channel you're viewing. But down here under Mesh Maps, you can switch to that and actually see uh, the maps that you did. So that didn't do anything. Um, so I'm going to adjust these max frontal distances and max rear distance. And we're going to try that. First, I'm going to check 
and see if it's kind of weird. What have I done? So something has something wasn't included in my. Uh, okay, let's let's clear this up first. So I've made some I've made some mistakes here, uh, which is fine. I, I thought I had done a quick automatic UV unwrap, but then I think I added something, like I had left the triggers out or something, didn't get included in that. Um, so I'm just going to make sure that all of these objects are selected in the low poly, uh, and I'm going to delete the exploded low poly because the UVs are going to change. The UVs between the assembled low poly and the exploded low poly have to be exactly the same in order for this to work. So I'm going to delete the exploded ones, and we're going to re-explode it after I do these UVs. So automatic UV unwrap that is not quite the way I wanted it. I'm going to clean up this group for a second. Um, so now I did an automatic, but they're all separate objects. And so all their UVs are just laid out on top of each other. I'm going to select all these UVs and, and choose layout, and that will uh, arrange them. This is a terrible UV layout. These triggers are <laughs> massive um, and just taking up so much space compared to the other things. So let's see if that will make them behave. There we go. Okay, that's a little better. Good enough for us right now. Okay, um, I'm going to come in here make sure that group is cleaned too, right? So Maya will oftentimes, as you change and do things, it'll make groups and make new groups and subgroups and blah, blah, blah. Um, when you're getting ready to export, it's best to clean the model um, as much as you can. Um, so clean out your groups, grab things, middle mouse, drag them uh, where they need to go, etc. Okay, now let's re-explode this model. Because again, you want the low poly UVs to A, B in, in 0 to 1 space, so within this square. Um, and you want it to be exactly the same in the assembled as in the exploded. So I'm going to duplicate these groups. Low poly underscore ex uh, exploded. High poly underscore exploded. I'm going to hide the originals and then grab these pieces and move them away from each other. Same with these triggers, which we're going to bake too. And that that is the high poly UV. Um, that is the low poly UV. The high poly UVs don't matter. Don't worry about that. OK, so now we have these, but they have new UVs. So I'm just going to re-export all four just to be sure everything is lining up and everything, all of my changes make it over. I think technically I wouldn't have to re-export the assembled high poly because it's that's the only one of the four that hasn't changed. Anyway, just to be sure, just re-export. Um, just go down the list and re-export them all doesn't take that long so export selection that's the gun low poly export selection gun high poly uh, gun low poly exploded excuse me gun high poly exploded OK, now let's go back to Substance Painter. I'm just going to start a new one. Um, start over again. Gun low poly exploded first. I want 2K. Um, open it up. OK, so this, this is looking. I should have caught this at the beginning, but that's looking uh, <laughs> like it's working. OK. So now again, we have the low poly exploded in our project. We're going to bake it with the high poly exploded. So add it here, high poly exploded. We're going to leave all the defaults and just see how it works, see what happens. Looks like it's working this time, which 
is good. There's occlusion. There's a thickness, I think. That's world space normals. Whatever, etc. Um, so the high poly in this instance was just a smoothed version of the low poly. So there's not going to be a ton of uh, interesting details here. But again, you can come down to this mesh maps and look at your maps. There's a normal map. It's looking like a normal map. Uh, ambient occlusion, etc. So some of these, uh, especially the normal map, are the things that you want to have clean. Um, that baked on based on the uh, exploded version. But now, for example, the ambient occlusion, um, you'll probably want to do a bake on the assembled because like this, the slide on the top is going to cast occlusion onto the body down here and the triggers and the trigger guard will be underneath and they'll be much darker. Um, also, you want to get the assembled version back in here so you can do your texturing. So the way you do that is you go up to edit. Uh, and you do project configuration. And then this is where it, it stores what file you're working on. And so we can change that. And because they have the exact same UVs, all that's changing is the position of the, verti the vertices and the polygons. Um, it should take all of these same maps and load them right over top, no problem. So we're going to... Um, Duh. What button did I press? Select. Uh, select the low poly assembled. Um, if this doesn't work, you've gone in and painted some stuff, and it's and it's giving you an error down here that says that it, it can't do that. Uh, unselect this preserve strokes stroke positions on mesh. Um, that's just trying to redo your strokes, your brush strokes onto the different mesh and, and sometimes if it can't do that perfectly it just doesn't do it at all um, so if you hit okay and nothing happens come back in here try it again and uncheck that it should work just fine though in our instance so here now we have the assembled version um, so I'm going to take a quick screen grab so you can see this uh, the difference here so we're this is the before this is the exploded occlusion bake we're going to rebake that but using the assembled high poly. So select the, the high definite in the bake mesh maps, select the file you have in here, which is the high poly exploded, hit this negative uh, minus button, and then load a new high poly, the assembled one. Now I'm gonna deselect a bunch of these, most of these, except I'm, I want ambient occlusion and I want position. Um, you can click on these and they all have their own kind of settings. In position, just so we can see what's going on, I'm going to change this to one axis and I'm going to change it to Y. So this is going to give me a gradient from bottom to top based on the object, not based on the UVs. So if you took those flat UVs into Photoshop and tried to do a top to bottom gradient in Photoshop, that gradient would be all patchy on the model because all of these UV islands are in different places. Uh, but this will give me a nice gradient across the whole object, uh, which can be nice if you're wanting to do some color variation or brightness variation, top to bottom, uh, that kind of thing. Gives you some cool World of Warcrafty feeling uh, effects in your texture. So I'm just going to bake these two maps now based on the assembled model. There's that uh, position. So now look at the difference between the exploded occlusion and the assembled occlusion. Um, this is much more like what I would expect to see, especially under here, um, from a, an occlusion map. And it gives it that cool, um, <coughs> excuse me, that cool soft lighting um, that you see. Uh, in real life and on, on a lot of games, especially stylized games, but all games at this point. Um, yeah, so that, that's why you do that second bake with the assembled version. Now from here, uh, you can start applying materials. Let's throw a, a plastic on here. 
and make sure that you've switched your viewport view back to material. So here's a nice, a nice plastic. Um, and then you can, and you can go to town, uh, go nuts. Let's see, is there anything else? Uh, so some quick, some quick kind of texturing tricks uh, using those maps. So if you go into textures, this is where your baked maps live. So there's the ambient occlusion map. Um, here is the curvature map, etc. Position. So that's what the position map looks like. Um, so if I if I apply this position map, uh, for example, you see that nice gradient. Uh, from bottom to top. A regular position map will do uh, in the X and the Y and you have to kind of split it using some filters and stuff. Um, oftentimes I mostly just want that vertical gradient. Um, so then I can come here and for example change this to multiply um, and then add a levels and I can adjust the effect I can get this cool kind of, it's darker on bottom, lighter on top kind of effect. Uh, the curvature map is another one that's great for getting texturing started. So I'm going to duplicate this uh, blue plastic, but I'm going to change it. I'm going to make it less saturated. Um, and I'm going to make it uh, sh much shinier. Uh, and I'm going to leave it at not metallic. And then I'm going to add a bitmap mask, which you can't see, <laughs> but it's it's up at the top of this. I just right clicked on the layer. Add a bitmap mask. Um, let me move my camera real quick. Uh, right click, add bitmap mask, and then it pops up this thing, and you can find, scroll down and find the curvature, which is just off screen, of course. Um, so now, just so that we can see what the heck is going on, I'm going to change this to a nice pink. Um, I'm going to turn off my position gradient so we can, again, see exactly what this is doing. So you can see it, the mask is starting to work based on the curvature. Um, but you can, you can add th things to the, the main channel of these layers, but you can also add modifiers to the mask channel. So I'm going to add a levels to the mask um, and then dial this in to really punch this effect a little bit stronger. There we go. So now it's calling out all of those edges. Um, and it, it's kind of pixely because my high res, my high poly model wasn't super high poly. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add a filter to that. And then you click this filter channel and there is a blur in here. And I'm going to give that a little bit of a blur. Um, so now that that's feeling kind of interesting, I'm going to up the roughness on the blue part and then that makes the corners the shininess of the corners really stand out more um, and instead of now that we can see what's going on instead of pink I'm gonna push this back to like a desaturated blue so now it's starting to feel like more of like a sun faded plastic right uh, which is pretty cool uh, and then I can add my my dark to light gradient in and now now this is this is starting to feel like at least like a material right so this is what I was talking about of, of taking a few extra steps uh, right after you bake the maps and apply some materials on it take a little more time to uh, to play with it and do a few things. So curvature map is great for this calling out the edge wear and stuff. Uh, a position map is great for adding in um, some kind of uh, color variation. You can also go in with the brushes and paint colors on. Um, 
Another thing you can do, so instead of adding a fill layer, I'm gonna add just a paint layer. Um, so all of these buttons correspond to what channels in the texture you're affecting. So I'm gonna do color, I'm gonna do height here. Okay, and the height, this is, this is poking out quite a bit, see? Uh, and then on this other side where it goes negative, that's carving in quite a bit. Um, so I go into here into brushes and I just pick a basic hard brush and then go into alphas. Um, and you'll, you'll not have as many alphas as I have because I've bought a few things. Um, but there's all sorts of uh, kind of built-in shapes and whatnot. This is going to take forever to load. And you can make these. These are just uh, grayscale graphics that you make in, in ZBrush or Photoshop, Illustrator. You can design your own little things here. Um, so let's pick something dumb. Um, so, and, and when you select one of these, it, it applies it as your brush, right? Um, as the brush alpha. So I'm going to do a base color that's roughly similar to that. And I'm going to give it just a little bit of a, of an inset. If you do too much, then, then it tries to do too much and it looks kind of, a, it looks a little too harsh. Um, so give it just a little bit of, of a negative and then you can stamp these in, um, or, or you can, uh, let's see. So there are these that I bought off ArtStation, um, that are like lots of techie kind of panel lines and, and things like that. So let's get rid of those. Um. And these are totally fine to to use. Um, et cetera, et cetera. I know some of these are kind of dorky, but you get you get the point. Even much more subtler changes. Uh, yeah, so you can go in um, and draw that detail, or some of you had text. Um, so like, you can come in here and stamp in your text. And, uh, and you can even add filters on top of this. So in, you, in these filters, you can choose to affect just the color. So you turn everything off but the color or the color and the height, which is what we want to do in this case. And you can soften these little bit um, so that feels nice and inset anyway uh, so that's exploded baking and just a quick uh, quick little uh, some quick steps to use some of those maps that you get from baking uh, in your texturing process um, just to get you started on that, um, just to get you started in making a texture that tells a story that has some uh, some signifiers of age and purpose and usage, uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, taking those extra steps makes all of the difference. Once where you go from here, polish wise and and really telling that story, like you can keep going and keep digging. But if all you do is apply some materials and some edge wear and some color variation, um, that's already further than most people in college, most uh, students. A lot of students will just slap on those materials in here uh, and call it good. You need to be taking those extra steps in order to kind of hit the bare minimum, the, the minimum viable quality level, right? Um, so please do so, uh, and I will see your 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 results <laughs> in the next class. Cool. Bye.